Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, I'm excited. We have James Chartrand, who's one of the top copywriters. She is the founder and creator of Damn Fine Words, one of the best online writing courses you'll ever see. Uh, I read that online, so it is true. She is also the founder of Men With Pens, a world-class website design and copywriting company. She's built two world-recognized businesses from scratch and has a blog with over 41,000 readers. She's been featured in Forbes, Newsweek, The New York Times, and Huffington Post. She writes regularly for well-known sites like Copyblogger, and uh, James, so I looked up your name on Copyblogger to see, read some of your posts, and you have 10 pages of results from yeah, all the posts that? you've written for them. <laughs> it's awesome. I loved writing for them. I, I haven't been writing for them recently because I'm off doing my own little projects sure. these days, but it was a great time writing for yeah. them. Sure. Thank you Ten for joining pages. me, by the way. <laughs> You're welcome. It's great to be here with you. Yeah. And James, since it's Inspired Insider, I always ask about your lowest moment? I have to say that I don't, I have a couple of low moments in business, but we live in a very touristy area. We depend on tourists to survive. And in the winter time, I had recently separated. I had two kids, hmm. tourism industry fell down and there wasn't any money coming in hmm. and I didn't have a job. The perfect I, worst two, storm. Yeah, yeah, it was terrible. Um, and I remember the lowest moment at that point was here I am on my own with two kids to support and I had the papers to apply for welfare yeah. wow. um, on my kitchen table and I just felt terrible that I couldn't take care of myself. And someone said, well, why don't you go look on the internet? I hear there's some writing jobs there. You're a good writer. You could do that. And lo and behold, there was writing jobs. They paid a buck for 500 words. Really? I thought it was money from heaven. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the first week of my, my work, I had $8 and I could buy bread and milk. And I thought that was stupendous. So that's really how I got my uh, start in writing. It was, you know, necessity is the mother of invention, as they say. Yeah. My personal lowest moment, um, my dad passed away when I was 17. Mm. He had Alzheimer's disease. Oh, sorry. Uh, and no, yeah. that's okay. Not your fault. Yeah. And uh, we learned, I was about 13 when we learned that. So he lived longer than expected with the disease and we kept him as home, at home as long as we could. Um, it was a really difficult period uh, of my life, made double because I was in that teenager phase when you're just trying to figure out who you are. So it was a very low point and losing your dad is a low point if, worse, you, yeah. you know if you care about them i know some dads aren't the best yeah. so what can you do but i love my dad a lot and i still miss him today it's been a 25 year anniversary uh, oh wow this december so you you never really forget the yeah, people that you love you know it can be i mean obviously it's always tough but something like that where yeah. someone kind of deteriorates is also it's, tough. it's brutal because you don't get a chance to say the things that you need to say. You don't get a chance to do the things that you need to do. You don't get a chance to connect and say goodbye. You get forgotten because yeah. they don't remember you. Yeah, yeah. And it's very painful. And it's, it's, you know, I reacted in all kinds of teenager ways far more than I should have. And for a while, um, I wasn't quite sure myself if I'd end up being that bad kid on the streets um, or if I was going to turn out to be okay. But I did turn out to be okay because, you know, you get through it. You just get through these things. So everything mm. that came along afterwards in business and in life, mm. it just pales in comparison to yeah. me. Like there's really no low point. It's just, well, here's a challenge. Yeah. Here's something I have to go through. I've been through the worst I can be through. Yeah. You know? Yeah. When you compare yeah. it to that, then yeah. everything, yeah. it's just a perspective. Nothing yeah, really seems that significant. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Eh? Yeah. yeah. So on the other side of things, what's been one of the proudest accomplishments or proudest moments? Building damn fine words. I'm so proud of that course. I'm so proud of that course, especially 
with all the courses that are being created out there today, it's a really nice way to make money on the internet. It's very easy to do with all the tools and resources we have. Um, but I'm super proud because I put a lot of thought and effort into it. I really poured my heart into it and asked myself, what would I have wanted to learn? Yeah. So I didn't, I didn't just create it for other people to help them. I created it for my previous self when I was starting out. And, and I'm really pleased with how it's come together. And I always promised it will change people's lives. And what's most fulfilling to me is that it has. It has. I have, I have seen people's lives change, like almost all of them. Um, and that's a big promise to be able to live up to. Yeah. I'm really proud of that. Really so proud. what's one of those stories that you think of that someone's told you that's changed their life? Um, there is a guy named Jesse, Jesse Lonclo, uh, who came to the course, didn't know him, little hotshot, thought he was good at everything, was going to race through the course and, and do it all. He was going to be a copywriter and that's all fine and well, but the course slowed him down, made him think, and he worked really hard at it. He gave it 110% and did everything he was supposed to do. He mm -hmm. figured if I'm going to pay someone 1600 bucks for a course, I'm going to squeeze everything I can out of it and he did um, and four years later he now works for me and mm -hmm. he's one of my best assets he's a great guy um, and he has truly built the life that he wanted and I think that course um, was the, the you know the tipping point for him yeah I mean something like that again you spend so much time energy and effort then on top of that you have to get students yeah. How, how did you find, what was successful for you to actually get students to get the I course? Was, yeah, I was super lucky because I was such a big deal at Men With Pens that I already had my fans and followers. Mm. So the, launching yeah. the course the I first I don't like the word lucky because you created <laughs> you create you know, Men With life. Pens. Agreed. So, but yeah, go on. I was fortunate enough. Um, well, you put the hard work into creating it, you I know? Did. I did. I did. Um, I rode my own coattails, and that's pretty cool. Um, so at that yeah. point, you had built up an audience with men. Are you making pens. me think? You know, I'm yeah. sitting here like philosophizing yeah. on life here. Yeah. <laughs> that's what, that's good. <laughs> this, yeah. I mean, you've already been up for you know a long time, so it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose, eh? <laughs> yeah, so what did you do to build? I mean, obviously you put a lot of time and energy. You did t I mean, 10 pages of posts from Copyblogger. Yeah. yeah. I showed up. I showed up. I showed up. I did the work. I didn't complain. What did you do when you launched it? Did you just send it to your list? What did you, yeah. you know? I just sent it to my list. It's here. The thing you've been waiting for. Yeah. I built, built up a lot of anticipation over the year, working hard on my course. I'm doing mm -hmm. this on my course today. Can't wait until it's launched. You, of course, talk about what you're yeah. excited about. Yeah. Uh, for me, it was natural. It wasn't a ploy. Um, and it actually paid off really well because it built natural anticipation for people. So when I opened doors, shloom, they came in mm -hmm. of course as you know when your followers jump in well now they've done it so you have to get other people who may not be your followers so in that sense I you know I still guest post I still hang out on social media I use a little bit of AdWords now and then I'm exploring with different ways of getting people into the course mm -hmm. um, yeah marketing you know everyone has to do it what was uh, successful about again it goes back to building up men with pens yeah what was successful or what worked well with with building that up you know i'm a very different person today than i was when i first started men with pens mm -hmm. i if you read some earlier posts they're full of arrogance there there's a lot of swagger going on i thought i was hot shit and i walked the talk you know um and it drew people Probably just that confidence. She's confident, or at the time, he's confident. Cool person. I should hang around with that person. Um, I'm a little more quiet these days. I've gotten over myself. You know, everyone has to. <laughs> but 
there's a genuine flavor and a genuine caring that's always been there. I've never been shy about helping people. So if mm -hmm. people left me a comment, I would answer personally every single one. If mm -hmm. people asked a question, I would answer it personally every single one. And I'd do what I could to help make their day better. And mm -hmm. I've always done that and I still do that today. So I think that has um, probably more impact than the swagger and the cockiness. Mm -hmm. So that was fun too. Yeah. So who are some of your most influential mentors and some of the advice they've given you? I really, I really don't ha. Huh, I really don't have any people that I look up to because I realize that we're all ordinary in our own mm -hmm. ways. You know, nobody's any more special than anybody else. Mm -hmm. I really admire Brian Clark uh, of Copy Blogger. He was one of the first who got into this whole blogging thing, and he basically paved the way for everyone else that came after, at least in my industry and in my niche of online marketing. Right. Um, and he was, he's very smart, he's very sharp, and he can see things ahead, and he's not afraid to try and experiment and say, well, that doesn't work, we're not doing that anymore. He, he's not afraid of that at all. And he's got a lot of confidence and a lot of just something that I wish I had, that leadership feeling. I probably have it and don't realize it, who knows. Um, but yet at the same time, he's very human, he's very gentle, he's very shy. I've met him in person, he's incredibly shy. Just, you know, the, almost the complete opposite of how he portrays himself online. But if you blend it all together, yeah, he's a real person. And one thing that he really did that changed my life, he was having some kind of course or membership form or something that, you know, oh, maybe that's the one thing I'm missing. If I just get into this, I can actually get that little that thing that's going to make me even more right. successful. Yeah. And I emailed him and I said, you know, is this the right, should I be taking, Brian, what do you think? Should I get in on this? And he just answered me back with a single sentence, just a single sentence. What do you think you're going to learn that you don't already know? And I just sat there and yeah. Dude, you just lost yourself a customer. <laughs> <laughs> it, but I could have taken that either way. I could, have, I could have given him a list of all the things I thought I didn't know. But the truth is, I know this all. And whatever I don't know, I don't need that to figure it out, you know? Mm -hmm. you got to rely on your own smarts sometimes and quit chasing that one thing that we all know is out there, that magic wand, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, James, that's true. Thanks for sharing that. The, you know, I have I have two more questions, and I usually say one more question, but I well, you're and you'll see, you'll in. see why. <laughs> but but uh, before I ask, where what are you working on now? Where should people check you out? Um, actually, I'm going to start a little self challenge thing. I used to be very very heavy into social media, and I was like the Twitter king or the Twitter queen at the time. It's always there, and I dropped out of it because it got really commercialized, and everyone's promoting everyone. There's lots of links. Mm -hmm. I want some of that human interaction back. Mm -hmm. I'm going to challenge myself to show up 30 minutes a day every day on Twitter and just be human. No promotion, no no links, just talking with people and I'm curious to see where it'll go after 30 days well I've wasted my time am I a dinosaur is it going to restart something you know I hope that people join in and challenge themselves to just be real people chatting with real people um, the other thing I am working on I do have an ebook writing course it's like damn fine words for ebooks mm -hmm. um, I've run it once in the past and uh, I put it on the shelf for a little bit it's an intensive course I've taken it back off the shelf and I've been working on the 2.0 version, you know, streamlining things, getting some cool handouts going. I'm working on that and I'm really excited to be able to bring that back out to people because uh, I, I think people really like it. Yeah. So where should they check you out online? What, uh, what sites or? www.damnfinewords.com. You can always find me there. Uh, if you want to see me on Twitter, it's uh, Men With Pens, simple, sweet. You can also check me out at menwithpens.ca for Canada. Um, right. So those are the three places, but uh, most often damnfinewords.com, that's where people will really reach me. And you know, anyone's free to email me anytime. There's contact forms all over the place. It's really mm -hmm. easy to get in touch with me. Yeah. So two questions. One, 
besides personal family and friends, have you told anyone your real name in the professional world? There are a handful of people who know my real name. And I mean handful. I think I can count on, on my fingers, you know, right. one hand, not two. Uh, the people who know my real name. Um, it's one of those things that when you start using a persona name, hearing your real name in a business context is like, that doesn't fit. That's like nails on a chalkboard. Please don't call me that because I'm not that person at that time. It doesn't mean I'm acting. I'm just, you know, like some days you're mom, some days you're the professional, some days mm -hmm. you're the girlfriend, right. some days I'm James, some days I'm not. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, obviously it's a curiosity factor for people and I know that you're not going to tell me if I ask what your, what your <laughs> name is. Well, I figure, you but, know, there are some enterprising people out there that if they want to know my name, yeah. it is out there, yeah. it, is, uh, it is able to be found. The problem uh, with saying it isn't yeah. so much that it's nails on a chalk. I don't even want you to say it. I mean, it's like one of those things that, Ooh, like a magician, you like you. a magician, <laughs> you know, you want to know the trick, but you don't because it... Yeah. It creates some kind of yeah. curiosity there. You it, know what I mean? It would change things for me too to yeah. suddenly say, "Well, here's who I am." It would mm. change. It would feel different. I don't. I don't know if I want to go there yet. Um, mm. And you know, the sad fact is, everything's been published under James Chartrand. Right. So if I use my real name and say I wrote that, they're going to say, "Well, no, James did." Yeah, yeah, I'm James. So you have to re-explain the whole story a million times over and I just don't have time for that. I'm old, you know? <laughs> Not yet. So my last question, James, is... Um, I must you know, move around a lot. I'm, I'm noticing on the screen really? I use my hands and I move. That's I'm good. Like you're, Gordon Ramsay. You're animated. <laughs> um, you know, that the reporter who asked about your daughters. Yes. I'm curious. So they see you as a successful entrepreneur, writer, what kind of stuff, how does that influence them? What do they want to get into? Like, what, what do you see there when you talk to my them daughters. about? Yeah, your daughters, yeah. My daughter, they want nothing to do with me. <laughs> <laughs> how old are they? Uh, I have one who's 10, uh, mm -hmm. going on 35, and yeah. uh, the other one is 22, going on okay. 47. Yeah. Um, so there's a good variance between them, 10 years between them. Yeah, um, there's a balance there, you know, and I think it's an important thing to, to mention. Like, throughout this, you're, you're raising a family. It's yeah. not just your business, yeah. and I'm wondering, you know, what's your 22-year-old want to do, and how do you create that that balance? Because obviously, you've been a mom this whole time, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting because it's very important to me to keep my private life private. Mm -hmm. I don't want to walk down the street and have people point at me. I don't want my kids to go to school and get have them be teased because their mom is so and so. They're entitled to have their life their way. Mm -hmm. Um, so I just keep everything separate. Of course they know who I am. Of course yeah. they know what I do. We talk about it all the time. Right. Um, and I think they have a good sense of business because just the way I behave in For general. For sure. I mean, it comes yeah. up at the dinner table. It's, it's yeah, everywhere. Sure. So My daughter, the... the I have two daughters as well, so I'm asking from selfish yeah. reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they pick up more than we think. Um, my 22-year-old is actually manager at a David's Tea Store. She has a staff of 30. Mm. Yeah, and it's not something that we foresaw for her, but we realized that she was choosing jobs that were always in managerial positions, mm -hmm. that were always helping other people have a better business. It's kind of like a mirror effect. She doesn't feel that way. She's making her own life, right. but... She from saw what from I you. see, she's picked up stuff from me and yeah. is more successful because of what she sees me do or right. what we've discussed. Um, the littlest one is super interested in marketing. You know, mm. we make fun of television commercials all the time. Yeah. And I've, y you educate through that. Oh, right. see how that bank commercial is making you feel guilty? Well, this is what they're trying to get you to do. So she's very wise to the ways of the world already which mm -hmm. means she's probably going to have less chance of being duped later on in life out of sheer naivety so mm -hmm. that's cool um but neither of them care really they think that james is a joke we joke about it all the time 
uh, I've actually I had to write my last will and testament, you know, now that I'm a mature adult. And who would I leave my business to? Was anyone interested? And they're all like, we don't want your business. That's retarded. So, <laughs> okay, well, somebody's going to inherit it. Good luck with it. <laughs> you know, yeah. they, they really are making their own life. But they, yeah. you know, I, I guess I hope that I influence them in some positive ways for sure. There's some osmosis with yeah. the market. But they don't, they don't take me seriously at all. Yeah. Which I'm is sure, good. you know, underneath, <laughs> you know, that come, they'll come back, right? So yeah. <laughs> when, they get, when they get older... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But James, I appreciate it. This has been fantastic. And you know, thank you so much for sharing your your tips and knowledge with us. I, I it's my pleasure. You know, I hope that people who are listening get something out of this too. I don't want to waste anyone's time. Um, but I do enjoy chatting and sharing my stories and I hope yeah. that someone else enjoys them as well. And it's been great to talk to you. Yeah, likewise. And uh, you know, say hi to Michelle Forte. For I me. will do that. <laughs> Thank you so much, James. Right, I appreciate thanks, it. Jeremy.